Hey, The Muffin Show here, and today I'm going to be answering the question, how good is the Chupacabra in Super Auto Pets? The Chupacabra is a custom only, uh, which means it can appear in the weekly, which is where this game comes from that you're seeing now, and it is, it's very good, and I think it's an interesting opportunity to look at why knockout pets in particular are so frequently problematic, why they're so hard to balance, and why they present such a challenge for Team Wood games from a design perspective. So what do I mean by knockout pets can be problematic? It it all comes down to the fact that there's a concept in all battlers like super all pets called breakpoints. Uh, I don't know how familiar you are with this. I'm just going to assume you don't know anything. Um, so sorry if I'm explaining this and you're like, I already know all this stuff. But what I mean by breakpoints is let's imagine you have a pet with 10 attack and 10 health. Say that as a 10 10. If your 10 10 goes up against. Your opponent has two pets with 9 attack and 9 health. Your 10-10 will knock out the 9-9, the first one. Then it will have one health left, which means that it can then trade with the other 9-9. So your 10-10 is trading for the equivalent of 18 attack and 18 health. Because it had slightly more stats. That's why I'm, That's what breakpoints means. It's the concept in auto battlers and uh, really in game design in general that having slightly more stats, a slight difference in stats can make a huge impact on how pets and uh, monsters and whatever the game equivalent is, how they trade with one another. It's the reason why garlic at tier 3 is one of the best, arguably the best food perk in all of Super Auto Pets. It's because it improves that pet's breakpoints, which means that it sometimes, oftentimes even, it can, adding garlic to a pet can like double the pet's value in battle. Now, what does all of this rant have to do with knockout pets? like our Chupacabra here. Knockout is a mechanic that if your knockout pet is slightly smaller stats than the pet it goes up against, its knockout effect doesn't do anything and the pet in that situation sucks. It's terrible. But if it has slightly more stats than whatever pet it goes up against, its knockout effect triggers and most of the time, with how Knockout is designed, that means that the pet is good to really good. Is the reason why in this weekly Rhino is so frustrating to go up against? Because of, like, the XP cheat, its effect is just so incredibly oppressive. It's... The, the win more element of Knockout is really hard to balance. What this really works out as overall in Super Auto Pets is most of the time knockout pets are either, most of the time they don't get their knockout effect trigger or their knockout effect is not good enough when triggered that no one plays them and they, they suck. Or their knockout triggers most of the time that you play them and so they're really good, and they're really frustrating and oppressive to go against. The Rhino I would give as a perfect example of a knockout pet that's it's a lot of fun to play. It's really frustrating to play against, and very frustrating. It, it's just, it doesn't feel good going up and losing to the Rhino's effect. Which is why I imagine a lot of people are going to dip out this weekly after playing a few games for that reason. I will say the Chupacabra 
is at tier two, Chupacabra is as good as Rhino is at tier five. It's its effect is not anywhere near the power level of the Rhinos. It doesn't cascade in any way nearly as dramatically. But the way you can consider it is when you first see Chupacabra at tier two, it's four two. Right, four attack, two health. When you first see it, turn three is four attack, enough attack, where most of the time it's going to knock out a pet. Yes, most of the time it will get one knockout as a 4-2. With one knockout, it gives three health to your other pets. That means the total stats that's contributing to your team is essentially four attack, five health. If there was a tier two pet that had four attack and five health, would it be a good pet? Yes, it would be a good pet. So for that reason alone, Chupacabra is a very strong pet. I I do think it's less problematic than other knockout pets because its effect doesn't feel as oppressive or frustrating. It makes a pretty substantial difference because of how it affects breakpoints on all of your other pets which is where Chupacabra does have this cascading, but it's not as in your face as something like the Rhino is. And so even though in this weekly, our Chupacabra is doing just as well, if not better, because we were able to invest in it so much earlier than Rhino, it's not as... To a large degree, it just feels like any other time you're losing to an opponent with a big pet. But it is doing quite a bit more work than that anyway. So I haven't really talked about this game specifically and what's been happening turn to turn. So let's go ahead and tune back in and talk about it. So here I just got the Chupacabra. Uh, to 489 health, it has the garlic. This means that it's not going to be taken out in one hit from another pet, because it essentially has 51 health because of the garlic. I go ahead and buy the panther because I think the funniest strategy that's actually, like, pretty good and protects against snipers, and in particular the rhino, is getting panther and giving it garlic. Because it's, I think it's funny. Now, the Panther's not doing anything much right now because our Troopa Copper is just beating everyone up. But by then, you will get to see some, a fun highlight of the Panther. Once we start going against some stronger opponents, our opponents get some stronger synergies and it becomes a little harder and we can't just solo with the Chupacabra. This game has also done a good point of just highlighting why Rabbit Cow is very good. It's just... That's how we were able to scale our Chupacabra up. Uh, I won't harp on that anymore because you, you just saw the game yourself. I think it's pretty clear just from that how good Rabbit with and Cow can be. Here we found the garlic for the panther. It is an interesting interaction with knockout pets that if you give them the tomato like our opponent did, if that knocks out their back pet, it's surprising. It, it gets that triggers its knockout effect, which is interesting. And that's something that is worth considering. And I believe I 
I think I switched my pets around to put the cow in the back so that it doesn't get knocked out by a tomato. Maybe I'm thinking of a different game. In general, that is with this weekly because tomato is arguably the best late game food to put on your pets and rhino so popular uh to put a pet in the back that doesn't get knocked out by tomato our opponent's down to one heart so we just need to close out this game this this one last fight in order to win it and yeah, this is what I was trying to remember. I used the chocolate instead of the panther in the shop to level up, because I want the extra health from the rabbit. And having the cow in the back is going to prevent another cascade from our uh, opponent's rhino. It's satisfying seeing the snake hit the panther all those times and do almost no damage. And that allows our breakpoints to be just enough that we're able to win that last fight. So the level 3 panther with the garlic did end up closing out that game once the opponent got strong enough that our chupacabra alone wasn't enough. So I hope this discussion was interesting. I think it's an interesting look at uh, Knockout as a game mechanic and why you should be trying out the Chupacabra. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, I really appreciate a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.